going to be working on drawing conclusions while we read fiction or nonfiction text. Drawing conclusions is when we use what we read in the text and we combine it with what we already know in order to figure out what characters might say or do. And if we're reading nonfiction, we use what we read in the text and what we know about a topic as a way to infer something that's not stated in the text. It's a bit like taking different things from the text, combining it in your brain with what you know, and coming up with something new. So a good way to picture this is when you make trail mix, you have some pretzels, some Cheez-Its, and some chocolate chips. And those are three separate things. They could be separate statements or um, things from the story, things the character says, reactions. And when we put them together, we have something brand new. We have trail mix. So we're going to do that today. We're going to read a short passage and we're going to take some things from the text, combine them together with what we know in order to draw conclusions. Sarah and her father woke up just before dawn. They put on warm clothing. After quickly eating some breakfast, they went out to the garage to get the tackle box, poles, and container of worms. They got into the car and drove to their lucky spot. Soon, they were sitting in a boat enjoying the crisp morning breeze and the colorful trees along the shore. Sarah skillfully cast her line, and it was not long before she got her first bite. Father said, guess what we are going to have for supper tonight? All right, so we can draw some conclusions about Sarah, not because the author came right out and told us something about her, but we're going to take some of the things we read and what we know about this um, topic in order to draw our conclusion about her personality or something about her character. Sarah can best be described as scared of the water, mad about getting up early, skilled at fishing, or new at fishing. So I know one of the things that I read here is that Sarah skillfully cast her line. And what I know about this already is that when you're casting a line, you're out fishing. And if somebody is doing something skillfully or with skill, they're probably pretty good at it. So that makes me think my answer is what choice is going to be C. Are there any other clues within this passage that would help me come to that conclusion? It says they drove to their lucky spot. What I know is that if somebody drives to a lucky spot, it's likely that they have been there many, many times before. And if she has gone to this lucky spot to cast her line or fish many times, she's probably pretty good at it. I also saw that she had to go to the garage and get a tackle box, poles, and a container of worms. Now, the author never comes out and says, Sarah went fishing. But I know that if she has her own tackle box, poles, and container of worms, that she's probably somebody that fishes quite often. And the more you do something, the better you get at it. So the best choice here would be skilled at fishing. I drew that conclusion because I know tackle box, poles, container of worms means they're fishing. Somebody who casts a line is fishing. Driving to a lucky spot or being skillful, that tells me she probably does this frequently. So I'm taking those bits of information combined with my knowledge of fishing to draw the conclusion that she is skilled at fishing. Okay, same short passage. Where does this story most likely take place? So we can draw conclusions about the setting. The author does not come right out and tell us it was a warm summer day. We have to take clues and what we know about that time of year from the clues in order to draw a conclusion. All right, so does it take place on the lake in spring, on the lake in fall, at the farm in summer, or at the beach in winter? Well, first thing that jumped out at me as I was reading is that they put on warm clothing, and that to me screams colder weather, so I can probably rule out summer. It said there was a crisp morning breeze and colorful trees. So now I'm thinking maybe it's likely to be fall. That's when it's crisp but not freezing. You still need warm overclothes and colorful trees tell me fall because leaves are changing. Then I see sitting in a boat and I see the word shore and in my mind those go together because you can't fish without being in a boat or standing on a shore. So I know they're near water. So my best choice here is B. 
I know that they're on a lake in the fall because the only other water would be a lake in the spring and we wouldn't have colorful trees in the springtime. They'd just be starting to get their buds back and we wouldn't be at the beach in winter because we wouldn't have colorful trees and a crisp morning breeze. Okay, last question. Why did father start talking about supper tonight? He was hungry, he was making a joke, Sarah wanted to go home, or Sarah caught a fish. So I went straight to where he started talking about supper. Father said, guess what we're gonna have for supper tonight? And right before that, it says that it wasn't long before she got her first bite. Now, in my mind, I know she's fishing, she's cast her line, and she got her first bite. So they're talking about a bite from a fish, and we can infer that she's caught it, and that's what they're going to be having for supper. It also says, um, earlier in the passage, we talked about how she had her own tackle box, their poles, container of worms. That lets me know that Sarah and her father likely go fishing quite frequently, and when she gets a bite, that probably means that she's caught something and dad can plan on having fish for supper that night. So our best choice is D. Alrighty, and there's those fish. So today you'll be working on drawing some conclusions about setting, about characters, based on what you know about the situation they're in from reading, and little clues that the author gives us. Good luck.